I didn't intend for there to be this much of a lapse in time in between this video and the previous videos, but I had some unexpected things come up and I couldn't get around to uploading. So um, after I make this video and the next one, that will conclude the entire discussion or collection of videos that I've been making around Gen Z. Gen Z has not only altered society and culture, like I talked about before, but they have also significantly impacted economics and politics as well. Gen Z is very vocal about the changes that they want to see in society, and many of them have turned to the political arena to fight for those changes. In 2022, Gen Z made up the entire 18 to 24 age cohort for potential voters. Gen Z has been getting politicians very excited by being the most engaged young voters that they've had in decades. Many politicians have started earning brownie points with the younger generation by speaking to their hearts and souls, offering them an opportunity to make the world a better place and alleviate many of the systemic or societal pressures that they feel that they face. In other words, politicians have continued to employ Napoleon's age-old wisdom. If you wish to be successful in this world, which would be the political world, promise them everything and deliver none of it. This tactic is particularly effective with younger and more impressionable people. Tell them you promise to remove a burden for them and they will come running to the voting polls and fill out those forms with haste and hope. And for office to grow the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. Because when we do that, everybody does better. Politicians still like to play their dirty tricks by employing these false hopes. The shift to focusing on appealing to younger generations and the things that they want and the things that will make them come running to the voting polls and increase their, their polling, that has been what's changing and will continue to create changes within the political atmosphere. Gen Z's initiatives have permeated their way into the economic system as well. There has been a shift towards less work and more work flexibility. There has been a push for more transparency among consumers and large corporations and advocacy for more sustainable consumption patterns. I mentioned these changes briefly in the previous videos about society and culture and how working from home would impact Gen Z. Still, I wanted to address economics and politics separately because I believe that Gen Z's ability to impact these categories is significant and can become even more significant in the upcoming future. Okay, let's go ahead and start with Gen Z's political impact. It's hard to address Gen Z and politics and the changes that they've made without addressing sort of the digital integration or the digital landscape that has now become politics. Political debates occur in the comment section of YouTube channels in the comments of Twitter posts and on podcast shows. Politicians have started creating social media accounts, posting their political initiatives, and they see social media as a grassroots tactic to build their following amongst younger generations. Undoubtedly, social media and the internet have changed how many generations interact with the world. In one of my previous videos, I outlined several ways that social media has impacted Gen Z. If you want to hear about that, I will leave a link to the video in the description, or you can click on the top right icon. I'll link it up there if I can remember. Social media has become the primary source of news consumption for young consumers. According to a study that polled the preference of news consumption across different age groups, the study found that 50% of Gen Z use social media platforms to see news and information about current events. Social media is not necessarily a bad channel to find information and news. Often, it's much faster than TV or online journals, and you get to see images or responses from the people who are actually involved in those incidents. However, there is a major downside to consuming media through social media channels, and I'm sure you all can think of the answer as to why. Despite how many people may feel about social media and its censorship, um, there really isn't that much control that these companies who have social media platforms or online platforms, there really isn't much that they can do to regulate the type of information or the type of news that circulates 
on social media. It's difficult to know what is true, what is fake, and there's so many things that's getting posted on these websites on a daily basis that whatever algorithm that they employ, even the people that they have checking all of the content and things that are posted, there's so many things that kind of fall through the cracks that get passed on that can kind of skew information and cause a lot of misinformation to be spread out through social media and to young consumers. There's a lot of false information on the internet, obviously. There's also a lot of incomplete information on the internet as well. Social media giving people a platform to speak and voice their opinions is great. However, when people present one-sided arguments or withhold pertinent information because it conflicts with their narratives, it creates confusion among many people. So I say all this to say what? How does this really impact politics? Suppose you have an influential generation that is engaged and passionate about politics like Gen Z. They vote and they create online petitions and these different initiatives and they go to social media to figure out news to follow political people that they watch for their campaigns that they may vote for. This is where they're getting their news. This is where they're getting their media. Still, right, if they have an incomplete picture of the issue or have listened to someone who's pushing their agenda and they're falling victim to false narratives or misinformation, doesn't that obviously seem dangerous to you and how it could affect politics? You have incredibly zealous individuals advocating for things that they don't understand telling their friends and their families, sharing it instantly across social media, not just word of mouth. They are spreading all of their agendas and things that they believe based off of may be true information, may not be true. They're spreading these things instantly to millions and millions of people with an incomplete picture or a completely false picture of what it is that they're voting for, what it is that they're trying to push for and they have no idea the future impacts of the people or the things that they're supporting. Then what's worse about the entire cycle is that politicians are so desperate to fund their campaigns that they will bend over every which way to secure voters in funding. Every one of these politicians, what is that? You you don't want to work anymore? Oh, oh okay, is that what you said? Oh, what would you say? Climate change? Oh yeah, don't worry about that. Send me $29.99 to my GoFundMe campaign profile and I'll make sure all these big heathenist oil companies pay, I promise you. Then what happens? After they gain some momentum and get into the position of office that you voted them in for or that they wanted to get into, they never do any of the things that they promised you they would. And they make a faint effort at some sort of initiative in order to secure re-election. You platform a person that should never be platformed, but then get upset when that person proves to just be another Muppet who wants to sit at the round table full of other useless politicians. Talked enough about the political impact. I'm sure you all can see how Gen Z and them being online or them being extremely engaged in politics and having an incomplete picture of politics can obviously impact the future of politics and the future of society in general. Now let's just quickly get into some of the economic impacts that I observe that have been the result from Gen Z. Gen Z's economic impact without mentioning social media is tricky. I trust me, I tried to get around it as I was making this video, but it was it was just too difficult. If you watch this channel regularly, then you know that me saying social media or the internet is a reoccurring theme. So if you're tired of hearing about it, too bad you're on social media right now. You are already trapped in the matrix. I bring social media up in this context because I wanted to address the rise of the influencer profession, if you want to call it that. Whether you respect the occupation or not, social media influencing has become a very profitable business for many people in Gen Z. I'm going to make another video later this year about the rise of influencing and how YouTube, Twitch, and other platforms have affected younger generations. So be on the look out for that video later this year. In that video, though, I will focus more on the societal damages and kind of personal damages and how it affected individuals who partake in those sort of professions.
But here, I just want to highlight how it has impacted the economy. Or being an influencer has bloomed over the past decade. And the industry's annual growth rate looks very healthy for the next decade as well. Gen Z members have experienced wealth and influence at such an early age. It's honestly quite baffling. Realize that it's a small majority, small minority, excuse me, of Gen Z who has gotten lucky with internet stardom and quickly amassed significant amounts of wealth and fame. However, these individuals still play an essential role in the influencing the broader majority of Gen Z and even older generations as well. Companies have strategically started to advertise their products or services through influencers because they recognize how much of a control that they have over young consumers purchase patterns. Think about the last time you shopped for a new phone, a car, or any sort of product. Did you go on YouTube and look up an unboxing and a review? If you were shopping for a car, did you look up a POV test drive of the car? I know I know some of you have done this because I, I do a lot of these things myself. We have grown to trust influencers or people who review products online and it has really become an essential part to how we consume products. Before we buy products, before we even consume the product, we do sort of a research phase and we look up reviews either from people writing blog posts, forums, we watch videos to see how the product really looks before we even make a purchase. Influencers, companies have really started to tune into this new purchase pattern and, and consumer behavior and they've started to take advantage of it, hence the rise of influencer. Some people make purchases because they like the influencer and they don't even like the product. There's plenty of times or times that I've seen that people have bought products that influencers were advertising or promoting, not because they cared about the product, not because they needed the product, they cared about the company. They did it simply to support their favorite creators or their favorite influencers. The relationship between creator and viewer may not seem like it can be impactful, but it is. Influencers have changed the way consumers make purchase decisions. People's purchase decisions are determined by influence or marketing. Then the categories of goods where people spend will consistently change over time. Just a quick example for the economy. If you have a certain good in our economy that's usually very consistent, it flows well, even if it's something that is sort of trendy. Let's just say it's a retail product, anything from beauty and health or clothing. If you have an influencer who is now promoting a specific good or a specific category of good or just a certain type of layout of products and that influencer is well known in their space, they have a loyal following, it changes how our economy works. It changes the categories in which people spend. It changes what businesses will thrive in the new economy. So if easy example is e-commerce. E-commerce completely jumped off, of course, due to the pandemic and also due to influencing. Now, e-commerce makes up a large portion of the revenues from our economy. There's a lot of revenue that the country makes based off of e-commerce transactions. And a lot of those e-commerce transactions are a result from social media influencers and the whole influencing profession and influencing influencer marketing. Talked enough about influencers and how that affected the economy. So as I bring this video to a close, because it's already getting extremely longer than I anticipated, I just wanted to address one more area that impacts the economy, which is education and debt. Gen Z is the smartest generation. These are the words of other people who have made articles, not mine. So don't get in my comments saying, you guys aren't smart. You guys eat Tide Pods and, and, and cinnamon. Hey, you know, yeah, there you go. Thank you. You, you got me. All right. Way to go, Scooby-Doo and crew. You, you've, you've cracked the code. You solved the case. Like, damn, that was in 2012. Can we move on? Shit. Like, I, I know. I know people in my generation were eating Tide Pods and doing random stuff. But we are classified as the smartest generation. Not my words. 
other people have said that. Gen Z was the generation with the highest enrollment of two and four year degrees. With enrolling and finishing these degrees comes debt. Cost of education has been rising dramatically over the past few decades. Sadly, education has become a profitable business for lenders. It's simple supply and demand for them. The more people that express interest in pursuing higher education, the more they can increase the rates because people are going to pay for it. Education leaves people with a crippling debt that takes them decades, if not a lifetime, to pay off. It does not require any of us to be an, ed an analyst to know how having an economy fueled by debt is not sustainable or healthy. Overwhelming debt at an early age could be why many younger people feel or report feeling burned out or overworked. They spend years and put in a lot of time, effort, money to obtain the, their degree. And now that they have it, they are struggling to find a job with the degree, but they still must pay back their loan. High debts and low wages are not a good combo. Trust me, I know. The more consumers focused on paying back their loans and basic living necessities, it leaves little room for any sort of discretionary spending. Companies that produce goods and services that are more of a luxury rather than a necessity are probably going to find it very difficult to sustain in the next few years in, in, in the economy. So I talked about it again, how, it, how things change. With student loans starting back up uh, in these past few months and them going to be in full effect for the upcoming years, and like I said, Gen Z and the younger generations are the smartest or the most educated generation. They're continually pursuing forms of higher education, two and four year degrees. As they continue to go on, get these degrees, take on more debt, and their jobs or the job market doesn't satisfy their position or it doesn't allow them to pay off the debt that they have. Um, there, there leaves little room for companies who are trying to push whatever sort of products or services that services that they have that are really outside the realm of living expenses or living necessities. And obviously this affects the economy in multiple ways. It just Again, similar to influencer marketing, it changes the way and it changes the categories in which people spend. And it just kind of shifts from one sector or one industry in companies dominating the market or creating a space where they produce the highest revenue or contribute the most to you know, the GDP growth. And it just kind of fluctuates the economy and, and consumer purchasing patterns and where people spend. I've been talking about Gen Z economics and politics for this whole time now. Um, this is going to wrap that up. I do have one more video about Gen Z and then it's over. So if you guys have become a little bit burnt out from the topic, I understand. We got one more video and then I'm going to transition into a different category of videos. As always, I thank everyone who has watched this video until the end. To my returning subscribers, thank you. To my new subscribers who have been patiently waiting to view more new content, don't worry, the wait is over. I'll be releasing more videos shortly. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. I would love to see what you all have to say. If you have no comments, I will see you again in the next video. <laughs> Don't you think?